next episode of the Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Raul Klingberg, your host. And today I have my assistant helping with some camera work so she can zoom in close and you can see uh, what I'm talking about. Today I'm going to discuss how some of the design decisions are made uh, and the process I go through to determine the materials that I use and how I'm going to apply those materials to the construction of the aircraft. So what we're going to take a look at here today is the shear web for uh, the various wing sections and we're going to focus on the middle wing section and the wing tip. I'm getting ready to build the wing tips and I've been going through a process to determine uh, sizes and types of materials to do that. Hi, welcome back. Uh, my assistant's going to walk over here with the camera so you can get a better look at what I'm going to be discussing today. Um, what you see here is the uh, rib for the joint where the wing tip attaches to the middle section of the wing. And these marks that you see here are for the shear web. And I'm trying to determine the type of material, the size of material, uh, and how I'm going to do the cap strips for the shear web itself. Now, most of the wing is built with this blue styrofoam from Dow. This is an extruded polystyrene, and it's a half an inch thick, and this forms the shear web for most of the wing. Its advantage is that it has a very tight cell structure, so it doesn't absorb too much epoxy and get too heavy that way. And it has good compressive strength, and it's a very low density. It's only two pounds per cubic foot. I used this foam in my original wing for the shear webs, and it worked out really well. And the uh, sections of the wing that I still have, it's still holding up well after more than 20 years after it was built. So using this for the uh, new wing should work out just fine. But there are some issues out at the wing tip. Uh, the new design has a non-linear linear twist in the wing, uh, which means that there's a lot of twist in the wing out at the tip. And if you have a half inch thick shear web, and I've made a pretend one here, I've taken some foam core board that's a half an inch thick, this represents the shear web that would be inside the wing. And of course, uh, if there was no washout, the shear web would be mounted straight up and down like this. But at this joint here where the wing tip mounts onto the middle section of the wing, there's actually three degrees of washout, which is represented by this red line here. And you see if we have a rectangular shear web shape and the rib gets tilted relative to it, which I've indicated here by marking the red uh, outline of the shear web tilted, there's going to be a little gap at the bottom, a little gap at the top, because we have a rectangle that gets tilted. We either have to shave off an edge here and shave off an edge here, or I have to make the shear web just a little bit shorter and then fill those gaps. And because of how we're carrying the loads on the inside of the D-tube, it's very important that the carbon fiber that's on the inside of the D-tube be firmly attached to the shear webs. Now the shear web's going to have carbon fiber on the inside and fiberglass on the outside. And that's to uh, ensure that we have all the same material all the way around the D-tube. In other words, we have the D-shape, all carbon fiber to carry all the torsional loads. And we have to make sure that the D2 material gets tightly attached to the shear web material that's here. Now, on the inboard portion of the wing, I'm using uh, flanges like this. And they attach into the D tube. Now, here's a sample of the D tube. And these flanges would mount on the shear web like this. Uh, let's see if I can hold this up like this. You can see this. And the D-tube comes further back like this, so it's much more horizontal. So I'll just kind of fake that here. And the D-tube comes in like that. And we have a lot of bonding area on those flanges. And the flanges transfer the load down into the shear web. Now I want to do something similar out here on the wing tip. But having the half-inch thick shear web and the tilt on it uh, is a bit of a problem here at the joint. I could probably deal with the three degrees of tilt that's here with some filler in here. However, we do have the issue of the tip itself. Now there's eight degrees of washout at the tip, and you can see what happens here. We end up with a big gap down here and a big gap up here. Uh, and that would be a lot to fill, or I have to cut off the shear web at an angle. And not only that, we have to, trans we have to transition angles. Uh, so we got a little bit of tilt here and a lot of tilt here, and I have to cut a funny twist on the top of that shear web. In other words, over the length, over the whole length of the shear web, I'd have to have a, a strange twist on it. It's not an easy thing to build. And remember, I'm trying to design this 
to accommodate the average home builder so I want to have very standard easy construction techniques so uh, a half an inch uh, shear web could be problematic now I can deal with it possibly by cutting the foam at an angle and then mounting this cap strip on it like this now this is aircraft spruce uh, it is a half an inch by quarter inch it's extremely strong this little stick will carry 1250 pounds of force in tension before it fails uh, so that's a lot it's fairly lightweight it has a little bit of weight to it this is what I used on my original wing for a lot of the cap strip underneath the carbon fiber it provides a nice rigid uh, surface that's hard to deflect or compress and gives uh, because the carbon fiber is a very thin layer we don't want it to buckle or push into the foam so a little bit of wood on here uh, helps uh, prevent that from happening so there was the thought of using uh, the spruce cap strip on the half inch and I could cut the foam at some weird angle and then tilt the wood to accommodate the angle of the D-tube and I thought about that for a while and I thought about the uh, how I'm going to increase the strength of this. Now normally I would uh, had laid up uh, carbon fiber on top of this. Normally this sure web would be up like this and that sits on top. We put some carbon fiber on top. Um, this wing is much thinner than my original wing. carries a lot of load. At this joint where the wing tip attaches to the midsection of the wing, the load in the lower spar cap at 6 G's is 9,000 pounds. Actually, it's 6,000 pounds, but we have to build it to take 9,000 pounds of load uh, because we have to have a one and a half safety factor. So 9,000 pounds of load is a lot to carry. The little stick carries 1,250, so we need to improve it. Now, since I built my first wing, these new materials have come out. This is a strip of uh, pultruded carbon fiber, and you can see it's very small. Uh, this is uh, 24 thousandths of an inch thick, so about a 64th of an inch thick, and it's a quarter inch wide. This strip, much smaller and lighter than the wood stick, this pultruded carbon fiber strip will take 1,800 pounds of load. 1,250 for the stick, 1,800 for this. So the carbon fiber will take much more load for less weight, but it is susceptible to bending and buckling. We can't allow it to buckle or it won't carry the load. The limiting case here is compression, so we have to make sure that this doesn't buckle like this and fail and not take the loads. So you normally do that by bonding it on somewhere rigid. The foam is probably not rigid enough, so I thought, well, maybe I'll just glue two of these on like this. And if I put two on this side and two on the other side and the wood stick, that'll take 9,000 pounds of load. But one of these is going to be on the foam. We don't like that solution very much. Uh, I could have a wider stick, and then it's going to be heavier. We don't like that much either. Um, so, it's a bit of an issue. We could stack them up on top like this. Put two wide like this, and then put two more on. I need, uh, if I have the stick, I need four of these at the end that attaches to the wing. So it would be one, two, three, four on top of the wood. And then somehow we have to attach these cap strips into the carbon fiber shear web that's going to go on this surface. And why do we need to do that? Well, we need to do that because of the wing attachment system. Uh, if you saw my other videos, I have this piano hinge type system of carbon fiber uh, channels, U-shaped, that a pin goes through. And these go to one side of the wing, these go to the other side of the wing, and a pin comes in to join the two wing sections together. It's a carbon fiber pin, and it would come in here uh, to join the two wing halves together. And these would mount on the shear web like this. So the loads have to be transferred from the joining pin into the carbon fiber face sheet of the shear web and then up to the cap strips. If the cap strips are on top of the wood, that's a little difficult to do. Um, so, uh, another problem to be resolved. Uh, in addition, we, we have the tilt problem. So we have this attachment and how do you carry the loads up to the cap strips? We've got the tilt problem. Um, we might be able to deal with some of this uh, by going to a thinner shear web. Now this is 
the Venicel foam, six pound per cubic foot, quarter inch thick. Uh, this has great compressive strength, it, almost as good as spruce. It's like hard balsa. And because it's skinnier, when it gets in the wing tilted like this, the amount of offset in the gap is considerably less. In other words, there's less area that would have to be filled with structural filler, which is heavy, to cover that gap that's there. Uh, so that's a plus. Uh, its drawback is it's not the same thickness as the shear web of the rest of the wing. The rest of the wing has to have a half inch thick shear web uh, for a variety of reasons. I only need a quarter inch out at the wing tip. I've made these fasteners quarter inch so I could demo them to people. You could pretend this is the shear web with the carbon fiber on it and these would come together like this and we got these on the other side and it all gets joined up with a pin that comes through here like this. So this is how the wing sections would get joined together. So we have a shear web on this side, shear web on this side, pin, hinges, and that would be inside the wing here. And then when you want to take the wing tip off, you pull the tip off and off comes the wing tip. It's a neat system, uh, but it took some sorting out uh, to figure out how to make it all work out. So I'm leaning towards the quarter inch thick shear web. Uh, I know I can make these components the right size to fit it. Uh, but then I have the issue of the strength. This is a quarter inch diameter carbon fiber rod, pull truded, and this will carry, in shear, this will carry about 5,000 pounds of load. But we need to carry 9,000 pounds of load. In order to carry the 9,000 pounds of load, we need a rod that's that big. We need 3 eighths of an inch diameter. So if I have 3 eighths of an inch diameter, and then I have it has to go inside a tube and have an over wrap over it. So by the time you're done, it's a half an inch thick, which is why I chose the half inch thick shear web. This would go in here. We wrap around like this. And this is the pin that goes in and out to join it all together so that these components would actually be a half an inch wide instead of a quarter inch wide. So that means I got a quarter inch wide shear web outboard. I got a half inch wide shear, thick shear web inboard. 3 8 inch pin joining it all together. That pin would come in right through here to join up the two wing halves. So how do I work this out? Well, uh, here's where we're currently standing. We're going to have a quarter inch thick. This is going to come in here like this. We're going to wrap around like this to hold it all together. So I'm going to need a slight tapered area here on both sides. We're going to have to taper from a half inch diameter tube out here that holds the 3 8 inch pin down to a quarter inch thick uh, shear web. Uh, so right at the end of this, it's gonna be a little bit wider and that end can be shaped to match the D-tube structure. It'll be a half inch thick here and it'll just require a little bit of shaping to match the curve or the slant or the tilt. Um, so a little bit more hand labor to make it, but overall uh, probably the best solution and here's the best part. Because these happen to be a quarter inch wide, they will fit exactly on top of the quarter inch wide shear web. And I can stack up five of these. And five of these will take the 9,000 pounds of load that I need to take. And because they're thin, I can taper them down. I, there can be five sections of these going out along the tip. One is the full length, four feet. Then I got one at three feet. Then one at two feet. And then one at one foot and do another one at six inches. And that will carry all of the load. This is much lighter than the stick with the carbon fiber uh, strips. If I buy the Divinicel that is six pound density, it will be stiff enough to protect these from buckling. Uh, so that I can get rid of the heavier wood, go with the lighter modern pultruded materials. So these will get a cut this material, the Divinicel, to the shape of the shear web, and then I'm going to bond on the cap strips, top and bottom, put on the face sheets of, uh, excuse me, then I'll put the tapered end on to accommodate the larger diameter tube, so it'll be tapered down, and then I can laminate on the face sheets of carbon fiber and fiberglass, and at the end, I'll put on 
narrow flanges like this. They'll be skinnier than this. They'll be wide here, wide flanges here, and maybe only a half an inch wide here. In other words, I'll make them wide and then just cut this part off, throw away the extra. These are flexible enough so that when the D-tube gets applied, they will flex down and match the shape of the D-tube. So no matter how this is tilted, these will get bonded tightly to the inside of the D-tube. So the cap strips are on top like this. We got the shear web, we got the flange. Now, the flange transfers loads from the face sheets of the shear web, brings those loads up to this surface, but how do we get them into the cap strips? How do we get those loads carried into the cap strips? That's pretty easy. All we have to do is put one layer of carbon fiber over the top. So the cap strips go in here like this. You got a flange on both sides and there's a layer of carbon fiber that goes over the top. So that transfers the loads from the cap strips through the flange into the carbon fiber face sheets and then into the wing joiner components that are down here bonded to the face sheets of the shear wing. So that'll be the whole setup like this. This one will actually be essentially slipped underneath like that. We'll have that. That one will be in there. We'll have another one on here. So these will all be attached to that flange. Cap strips go on top, one layer over the top, and then the D-tube comes on like this. So that'll be the whole assembly like that. Should be fairly easy to build. Mostly it can be built flat on the bench, except for the little tapered part has to be done by hand, uh, which most builders can handle that at home. Uh, these are formed on a piece of angle of aluminum. There's a, another video on the uh, on my site that shows how to do that. So that's where we currently stand. So uh, as you can see, um, if you think this is a bunch of fancy engineering where this all gets planned out in some 3D model somewhere, and I know exactly what I'm going to do as I go forward, that'd be wrong. <laughs> this involves a lot of cut and try and fiddle around. This aircraft design is so new and different. Uh, that standard methods, standard size materials, standard materials, standard methods may not work. Uh, so I literally have to figure this out every step along the way. And this is just one decision. Thickness of the shear web and how I apply the cap strips and the other components and make the whole system work. And an, it, it, something like this to sort out these decisions can take me uh, a month sometimes. And there's hundreds of these. Uh, so constantly, I spend most of my time thinking about how to solve all of these problems. And the actual building and testing uh, is really a pretty small part of the work. Uh, and I wanted to give everybody a little bit of insight as to what's involved in creating these new designs. And that's why it takes so much time and effort to create something that's new and different. Hopefully, I'll be successful. There's no guarantee. Uh, I could finish this aircraft and it could be a failure. That's been known to happen. Uh, we all have our fingers crossed that that doesn't happen here. And I, I hope that you enjoyed seeing how some of the decision-making process is done. Uh, and cross your fingers and let's hope that this one actually works out. I'll have a video coming out uh, fairly soon about uh, the construction of the wingtips. And you'll actually see the process that I've uh, discussed here today put into use. And we'll see if it actually works. So come on back and watch that video. It should be up in, oh, two or three weeks. So bye for now.